What's going on, everybody? Good morning, late morning, or for some of you, early afternoon. We are here appreciating the afterglow of a Seahawks win, but <clears throat> we are just about out of the 48-hour period after that game where you're in your feelings a little bit. It was nice to be in your feelings positively. It is about time to turn the page, but before we turn the page, I want to take a look to see how the other games went, because we know the Seahawks won, and we know we're happy about that, but did the rest of the league cooperate with the Seahawks to create a truly, truly successful week? The answer is, as it almost always is, was kind of, right? Some games went good, some games didn't, and at the end of the day, you just kind of have a grab bag of results that are going to help you in some cases and hurt you in others. So, <clears throat> let's go through it. This is the rooting guide postmortem for week seven. Going all the way back to Thursday, Broncos, Saints, that obviously did go our way. Broncos blow out the Saints with no issue. Saints so injured right now, they don't even really have a chance. And their season is probably over now. They are two and five and are about to go cross country to play the Chargers. So, even though their schedule is not bad the rest of the way, it's probably too deep of a hole, especially if they don't get some of these players back. Um, two and five on its own is daunting, but two and six, which is where they are headed, is probably the end of the line. So, that's a good result. That's a team that we thought we were going to have to deal with earlier in the season. That's a team that looked like they were starting out to be one of the better teams in the conference. They have just completely wilted, completely gone to pieces, and you have what you have. All right, <clears throat> going to Sunday now. The London game didn't really mean anything. We wanted Patriots for strength of schedule, but um, yeah, they're not going to help us much this year with the uh, strength of schedule stuff, are they? They're just, uh, they're just a really bad team. So that gets us past the London uh, game. Let's go to the early window. Titans, Bills. I did not want to play the Bills coming off a loss to the Titans at home. So at least we don't have to deal with that. So I think that's good. They eventually get it going. They score 27 unanswered in the second half. So I'm going to say that's a good result, even if it may end up having a marginal impact. Uh, I just didn't want to play the Bills coming off an embarrassing loss because um, we got enough stuff to deal with in that game without the Bills being angry. So good result. Uh, Bengals, Browns, uh, I'm pretty sure that game had nothing to do with us. It, it was just a matter of, I guess, which team did you want to go into fire, fire sale mode more? So I guess it depends on that. But uh, objectively speaking, straight up, there's really not much to take away from that game as a Seahawks fan. Uh, Texans, Packers, a little bit of a heartbreaker here. Uh, felt like the Texans let the Packers get away with one. C.J. Stroud just didn't have it. <clears throat> just a, uh, a bad game. And they let the Packers get away with some turnovers and steal that game at the buzzer. And I know it's in Green Bay. I know Green Bay was probably favored for this game, but the fact that the Packers are here after losing Jordan Love in week one, <clears throat> the way they did, like, I, I wrote them off when that happened. Now, it was partially because I thought Love was going to miss the season, but even if he didn't, I was like, they can't win a game without him. And sure enough, they, they won games without him. So, kind of annoying that we're here right now and this Packers team looks like they're going to be the juggernaut some people thought they were going to be in the preseason. So, we got to deal with that now. And Houston not taking care of business does, you know, dent the armor a little bit, unfortunately. That one, it's not a divisional game. It's not a game that has anything to do with the NFC West, but that is actually, I think, something we're going to look back on and wish had gone the other way very badly later this year. Uh, Dolphins, Colts, not much. Strength of schedule, we wanted the Dolphins to win, I guess. But uh, uh, again, that's another team that until they get their quarterback back will probably not be helping us out that much this year. So um, I, I, I guess you want the Dolphins to keep losing if you want to maybe poach something from them in a fire sale at the trade deadline. But I, again, that just depends on you finding a player and the team has to actually want that player and then they actually have to make a trade, right? It's a chain of events that has to happen. And I wouldn't assume that it's going to happen just because they're bad. Lions, Vikings, uh, I really struggled with this one last week. 
<clears throat> I eventually decided that I thought it would probably be better if the Vikings won, so we didn't get that, but it's very jumbled here, right? We already lost to the Lions, so you could argue that we want the Lions to win the division, just run away with it, so we don't have to really think about a tiebreaker with them as much. And the Vikings, we play later this year. We could end up owning the tiebreaker with them if we beat them. So maybe we'd rather have the Vikings in the wild card. You could talk me into that too. But I, um, my, my inclination last week was I'd rather let the Vikings just dominate the division, run away with it, and a team like the Lions get knocked down a little bit to where they're in the wild card mix. I still thought that was slightly preferable, but at this point in the season, it's too early to know if this is a good outcome or bad outcome realistically, so I'm not sweating it too much. Um, Eagles-Giants speaks for itself. I mean, the Giants being completely out of it is nice, but as you can clearly see, they are a terrible team. They're one of the worst teams in the league. That loss to them is ultra embarrassing at this point. Um, I, I got no words for us actually losing that game at home and letting Daniel Jones kill us when he's not been able to do anything the last couple weeks against some pretty bad defenses. <clears throat> and um, yeah, the Eagles remain alive. They're four and two. They're doing some things right. The Eagles, they're uh, they're not going away. And that NFC um, East is still a three team race technically. I think Dallas is going to get pushed out eventually, but they haven't yet. So, yeah, we got this, uh, we got the Eagles hanging around now too, officially, I'd say. Raiders, Rams, they tried, they tried, they played a decent game, they fought, but couldn't quite get it done, just not quite enough gas in the tank. And the Rams, I don't want to say they're back, but they are a couple of wins away from being back in this, and... They can at least say they're getting some key players back, right? They can at least say, hey, we're going to get our receivers back. We're going to improve on the offensive line. We got a chance. So I'm I'm not um, completely ignoring them yet, and it would have been nice for the Raiders to get the dub here so we wouldn't have to think about them anymore because at 1-5, in five, I think you can cancel it. And I'm still not necessarily buying that they're going to claw their way back into this with their roster being as mediocrely talented as it is, but it <clears throat> would have been nice. would have been nice to get the uh, flush. Uh, Panthers, Commanders, not much to say. Like, we were never going to get what we wanted here. Clearly, the Panthers are back on their BS. It was a fun few weeks where they looked mildly competent. It's over. Um, And the Commanders, I mean, they're playing a really easy schedule so far. It's It's been some pretty atrocious opponents, but they, they continue to ru run it up. And it doesn't even matter who the quarterback is, I guess. So <clears throat> we'll, we'll see what happens when they play better teams. But the Commanders are doing their job at the moment. That's for sure. They are a problem. They're adding another playoff team potentially into the mix here that the Seahawks did not need to be dealing with. The big one, though, this week, and this is the big one that really went our way. And there, there were quite a few games that didn't go the way the Seahawks would have preferred. But um, the big one that went our way was definitely the Chiefs, who I thought were DOA. Like, the Chiefs don't really need the win as much. The Niners were kind of desperate at 3-3. Three and three. They had to win this game. It was in San Fran. Chief, I mean, both teams had a lot of injuries, but I thought for sure the Niners were going to answer the bell, and they kind of got whipped. They were losing by 16 points in garbage time, so the 10-point deficit, eh. And they looked awful, too. The, they lost Ayuk. I mean, it, it is a bad scene in San Francisco at the moment. So that was kind of the big one that went the Seahawks' way. Purdy looked like garbage when he didn't have a bunch of uh, all pros supporting him. And, I mean, their defense gets run up on by Kareem Hunt in 2024. Embarrassing. Like, it, it's just not a very good team. And I, I know they did beat us at home already. But it's not, a, it's not a very good team this year. I think we can now say that. And they're going to get a couple players back. But they're also not going to get some players back. So it's hard for me to believe they're going to become an elite team by the end of the year. So I'd say, yeah, that's the big one. And I, there's no downplaying that. Uh, Steelers-Jets didn't really matter all that much 
to uh, the Seahawks, objectively speaking. I did float that I'd want the Jets to have as many wins as possible so they're not desperate when they play us, but the Jets are not going to be desperate when they play us. They're going to be done. They're, that's a bad team, I guess. They're just a really, really bad team, and I don't even have to think about them in those terms because if this keeps going, Aaron Rodgers is going to retire before we play them, right? I mean, they can't do anything right now. Even their defense, which was their calling card with Sala, and Sala had them playing fairly well so far this year. They can't even do that anymore. So I'm not worried about that. Strength of schedule-wise, since we play the Jets, I guess we wanted them to win, but that's, again, a very thin. So not much to say there. Monday doubleheader, another Monday doubleheader, which I hate. I hate this garbage. Just give me one Monday game. But Ravens-Buccaneers, that went our way. And Tampa Bay's probably done. Um, I don't know what's going on with Evans, but Godwin's definitely going to miss the rest of the year. I'm sure you guys saw it. So they lose one of their starting receivers, and their receiver talent was one of the main seats of their power. And they might lose Mike Evans. And you see that Baker Mayfield, even though he doesn't necessarily have to be that anymore, he is still at heart a gunslinger. You saw it with some of the really, really bad throws he made against Baltimore last night. He needs those stud receivers to help him out. So I don't know if Mike Evans is going to miss any time, but we know Godwin's done, and it's hard for me to believe that Tampa Bay team can get off up, get up off the mat at this point. Uh, Chargers, Cardinals, unfortunately, got nicked at the buzzer. Cardinals remain technically alive. I don't think they're good. I don't think they're for real. I think they benefited tremendously from the Chargers just not having a real offense because they don't have playmakers right now, but didn't quite get it. Almost got it. Would have been nice. But that's your rooting guide for week seven. See you guys later. Go Hawks.